good. All right, let's get started. Uh, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It's the 17th of August, and it's kind of a kind of comfy evening here. Welcome, everybody. Um, unless, unless you've started school, and I think in some places people have, but um, I don't think Judy Jester Today has. Was... Welcome, Judy. No, yeah, we haven't right. started school yet. <laughs> I can tell. <laughs> today, <laughs> today was the first day for, for us. Oh, okay. In Watsonville, at least. So it doesn't feel so comfortable with you. <laughs> a little <laughs> more hectic. But welcome, everybody. Um, we um, have invited some teachers from the National Writing Project Makes Project. Is that the right title? I think so. Right, Christina? Mm -hmm. so yeah, MWP Makes. Okay, and it's one of the many projects that Christina Cantrell here um, helps to coordinate and organize. So thank you for coming and telling us what you're up to. Uh, Fred Midland is with us. Thanks Welcome. for hosting. Fred, uh, why don't you introduce yourself briefly? I'm the uh, Associate Director for Technology Integration with the Central California Writing Project based at UCSC in Santa Cruz. And uh, I'm working with several schools in the Santa Cruz area on uh, maker-related work. Cool, and we'll get into that a little bit. And Judy, this is your second time with us, two weeks in a row. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> and you've taken time away from your family on vacation. I really appreciate you sitting out on the porch there. Oh, sure. <laughs> Introduce um, yourself again, I, briefly. Sure. Um, I teach eighth grade English in Kennett Square, and I'm a co-director of our writing project. Um, and uh, this is uh, makes is new for us. Um, our uh, lead teacher um, for our site in this work is a woman named Patty Kohler, and she was one of the makers at um, the session at NCTE NWP's annual meeting in November. Mm -hmm. And um, so we were approved this spring, and we're um, we're getting started with our kickoff event in September and I did grab some of the origami Yodas that we made and here's one of them that my name oh, is <laughs> and these are the simple ones we're going to try for more complex ones we still have a couple of days to go oh so and, great um, we also tried making Darth papers so <laughs> you're getting we actually bought black paper yesterday to make more refined versions <laughs> so um well, uh, one of the things that are, I'll, I'll talk more about the kickoff event later. But anyway, that's part of our fun this week. Cool. Uh, Sam Reed is with us as well. This is Sam's first time on a Google Hangout. Uh, but welcome, Sam. Thank you. Yeah, Introduce so I'm, I'm, I'm a teacher here in Philadelphia. Uh, I teach at the Bieber Middle School, and um, I've been uh, like the point person for our Make, our Make a Project initiative here at, at the Philadelphia Writing Project. And we had the opportunity to uh, co-present at Urban Sites with folks from the Ozark Writing Project. We had a really good time. And I'm planning on doing some collaboration with uh, a local um, organization that does um, like solar, solar power uh, initiatives. And we, we're going to be making like solar power cars. Oh, cool. So, so really excited about that. Um, wow, that's a step and up from Yodas. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm hoping to do that uh, early. I mean September or early October before things get too uh, hectic with teachers' lives. Cool. So, uh, seriously, I, I was joking that that's a step up from the Yodas, but um, the <laughs> little puppets. But can somebody explain, you know, the range between those and solar-powered cars? <laughs> Is that a Fair way to start that, defining. That's here. a good question. Yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. Say that question. Say it again. How do they both fit into the same project? Is that what yeah. you're getting at? Yeah. Go ahead, Judy. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, again, I, I said last week um, that I'm new to the project. So, Christina and Sam, please, uh, and Fred, correct me if I'm wrong. But we're asking teachers and students to try things um, that they might not have otherwise attempted to make, or um, and then do some writing around that that will um, increase their ability to write well um, and and also perhaps to take um, things where people ha are quite proficient in those and then look at 
the process by which they um, compose those things and then link to how we create text in similar fashion. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, um, part of the MAKE project was to have also an explicit focus on, um, I think what Judy was um, talking about, having this opportunity to document even how you make something, so sort of connected to technical or process writing, and um, being able to share that with others, and then learn from others about how they make things too, um, as well as write in a range of ways. Um, but um, yeah, I think um, the there's also a, a, um, this idea of having authentic opportunities to make. Um, and to work with your hands and to think about materials and to consider things that, as Judy said, you might not have done before. Um, and then to really think about how to write and share what you did and what you learned and what you're thinking about. Mm -hmm. So anyone else want to add to that? Yeah, Fred, your take on yeah. what this thing is. Yeah, yeah I, th I think uh, one of the really important parts of Maker for me yeah. is uh, it, th that it's it in a way it's flowing out of the whole tradition of constructivism and the idea that you need some uh, real world experience as a basis for any kind of learning and that there's then opportunities immediately for two or three levels of metacognitive awareness that that you bring to students in their situation they're actually doing something. They're thinking about how to explain what it is that they're learning to make and do as they're doing that. And then they're thinking about, well, what else can we communicate about whatever it is? And so there, there's multiple um, kinds of writing that, that come out of the experience, but it's that it is experiential is is really the key i think and and um in elisa's classic example it's it's not just directions on how to make a peanut butter sandwich it's directions on making something that actually has a real world relevance and some I inherent interest for the student fred can i have you uh go a little more specific there like what does that look uh -huh. like in the classroom is there an example you can give us? Well, um, one example which we were exploring last year is having kids explain what they were learning in the gardening project that um, they have as part of their curriculum at the Continuation High School, um, which is one of the sites where I work, Renaissance High. And so um, the kids would be learning how to uh, plant seeds, how to make cuttings, and then planning and organizing to create an instructional video that would um, convey what they had just learned. Um, another great example that came out of that is a whole, the whole process sort of from beginning to end, you, you, the, the, as part of their garden class, the kids um, are growing food and then harvesting it and cooking it. And so presenting a cooking lesson that includes that background that, you know, here's the greens that I just harvested from the bed that I planted and, and helped cultivate. Um, so that's one end of, of, the, of an example. Another um, would be a project that we haven't yet started but are planning on doing around having kids create just a, a simple woven piece of paper that makes an interesting book cover and then doing when you can plug in whatever content that's going to go in the book. but that process of making the book and explaining how you do that making process is part of what they convey as they're as they're writing their pieces. 
So there's a, I can put a link to, to a, a, a whole curriculum unit that we developed around that idea. Okay. Judy, did you yeah, want to say nice something resource. or just wave? <laughs> Um, yeah, that that's in the ISK me uh, the ISK me uh, commons. That that particular example. Um, Sam, were you going to say something? Feels frozen here. Or, yeah, 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 it's it is freezing once Yeah, more. we're a little. Yeah. 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 Go ahead, Sam. You, yeah, you're asking a, you're you're asking me a question. I just thought you were about to say something. I'm sorry. Oh, um, yeah, I was, I was kind of going to talk about what it looked like uh, with us the past year um, in terms of uh, some of the different projects we took on. And so in, in, yeah, my, in my school, uh, we, we, did a, uh, we did a collaboration with the uh, um, Spire Q Puppet Theater. And so our students were actually involved in, um, like, creating performance puppets. And so – celebrate those mistakes celebrate learn from the mistakes and this what they'll carry on for like the rest of their lives well I'm back were, were you That's all still a nice there? sentiment <laughs> looks like it we kept we kept going Paul but I was wondering <laughs> good 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 I don't know what happened oops to me. oh no we're good keep going uh, I'll listen to that later so I I am still. Oh, you didn't hear like, the whole. No, nah, but I'll get it. I'll hear that. But but here's here's, I think every time I ask for an example, there's another sort of wonderful, interesting project, and I am having a difficulty putting a circle around this thing to kind of define it, um, and that's good. But I'm just wondering. I don't know what I'm. I guess I'm wondering if it becomes difficult to, to share experiences with each other um, because of that diversity of, of projects. Or, right. So if you're yeah. you're wondering, so right now everybody, um, yeah. there's six writing projects involved. Okay. Yeah. And then each writing project is trying to sort of make their own opportunities for teachers and students and potentially partners in the community, like Spiral Q that Sam, you know, Sam uh -huh. was connecting with, um, uh, to figure out ways to make things together, then to write about what they make, and then to document and share that work with others. Mm -hmm. So the doc, so all of that makes sense. It's the share with others, and then what do you do with that? how do you share all this diversity of work, mm -hmm. right? That ranges from origami to solar cars, to giant puppets, to gardens. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so that's, that's what we're question. here to talk about kind of, right? <laughs> so it's, it's yeah. kind of like we're fostering creativity, right? Right, that's <laughs> like the you centerpiece, can't, right? You can't, <laughs> you, can't like, you, can't package, you can't package creativity because it kind of it happens. <laughs> No, but on the other hand, for uh, our site as a new kid on the block, we'd like to know what you folks have done already so we can learn from what you've done and, and build on that work. And the yep. Posturist webpage is a really good first step, but it would be awesome if we could use something like Youth Voices to, um, right. to advance our work. Yeah. So, for instance, let's just look at a few places, like in the world, right, where people are sharing how they make and write things. Mm -hmm. So, here's just one example. Um, so, at like Make Projects, these are a whole bunch of people sharing different projects they make and how they make them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. Um, can you guys see the chat? Or something yeah, like I'll... Instructables. Right. Okay. So what happens on that site, though, makeprojects.com, is there there are, I don't want to call them recipes, but there are, if you want to do this too, here are the materials you would need here. Is, isn't there isn't there that kind of sharing going on there? Oh, on the Make Project site? Yeah. 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 Is that through Make Magazine? Yeah, that one happens to be. But there's also all these different sharing sites online. Um, and right. we, 
these sh sites are very much set up to support that kind of work. So, you know, there's not a reason to replicate that, but I'm just wondering if we can learn anything from those sites where people are sharing a whole range of diverse projects. Um, you know, it just occurred to me, have any of you been on the Etsy website the, where you can buy crafts? Yes. Mm -hmm. So I wonder if they have some channel as a part of that where they communicate with each other about these kinds of things and if there's a way that we could access mm -hmm. that if, it, it, if in fact it existed. Hmm. That's an interesting idea. Um, I kind of doubt it because they're, they're, it's essentially a marketing site for people right. to sell their craft. Um, I don't know. I mean, the, the dilemma that I see that, that I'm, I'm hoping that we can figure out a way to use youth voices to, um, to leap over is the, the, the sort of twin um, challenges of being able to include um, elementary and middle school students in a, in a context where it feels safe for them to be entering an online world. I just, you know, there is still so much resistance to the idea of letting, especially um, uh, upper elementary level students who are right at that sort of cusp of entering the world. Mm -hmm. And there's a, there's a lot of, of, uh, of social and cultural uh, fretting about what's going to happen to them when they do that. Um, so, well, you know, well, we why need... Don't we... I, I, I think you're right, but I wonder if between the three of you, if there is a way to think about what's in common between your work um, yeah, that. I can also I can also answer kind of quickly to say that I think what Gail Desler, um, Margaret Simon, and Kevin um, Hodgins um, have been they've been really kind of working through that, and I think with them um, on the site right. helping protect their own students, <laughs> they'll be a good example, and then we'll kind of see how that works right. out. Right. So I think so I think there is some work. Some very positive work on that, but it's all about teachers deciding to publish their their young people's work and being right there beside them. Um, so you know they're not going up there by themselves. So there's some answer to that, but I like that too. Right. You know, I thinking about what's in common is a good idea. I also I think you're Christina. I think pointing to that site that you point to is is an important notion that in sharing your puppets or in sharing the um, solar car, you're not just saying this is a really cool experience for me. Um, you know, this is what I learned from it. You're also kind of learning how to write it in a way that other people can do it too. I don't want to force <laughs> it that much, but that is, that's something new that, that I don't think we usually do. That I think that's part of what we're trying to support people in just thinking a little bit more about yeah. in this mm -hmm. project, um, as long as well as supporting all the different kinds of writing that might go with any sort of authentic making project, right? You might have like mm -hmm. research and you have, you know, the sort of why you wanted to do it in the first place and the things you care about or something more poetic connected to it. But you probably also have this like nuts and bolts, you know, and it doesn't have to be a, a constricted style, but you know, this is how I made this. This is the process that I used. You could do this too. Um, here's some things that I don't use to document the process so that, um, uh, you know, you can see better what I'm talking about. So the relationship between images and text and, video might be really important in that. Mm -hmm. And then um, I think uh, um, Fred was talking about a project he saw at Urban Sites. I think it was Fred or Sam about people who were reading the writing on seed packets and mm -hmm. analyzing, you know, right. writing that you find in the world that's, in, that's about instructions. Oh, no, we lost Judy. Oh. She'll come back, maybe. <laughs> um, the um so that there's also this uh writing 
you know, recognizing the writing in the world that's also around this sort of process work. So it is really tying, um, really had to, thinking about a focus on process and technical and sharing that kind of writing. And it is a piece of the Common Core standards too. So the idea of this pilot project was just to see what kind of connections could we make, what, what feels authentic, um, whether it's in the classroom or it's after school or um, it's in different community venues, but um, what, how, how can we support playing with this kind of writing as well as making? Uh, can, can I, can I uh, add on to the after school uh, component? Go for because it. Um, given the, the constricted spaces in our, in our regular school hours, the after school uh, and outside of school seems like it might be even the better space to like foster a lot of these projects because my other colleagues that were uh, involved in um, doing some, trying out some make projects, uh, did them primarily in after school, uh, after school settings. And uh, I, I, I don't know, some, sometimes it seems like school is like becoming, uh, school just isn't, I don't know, it's just not the right space or it's not like, is is not it's not the right space for like trying like some of these innovative creative things it's like kind of anti -cre anti creativity is like school is like an anti creative space you know and it's really frustrating and yeah. if what what we're actually doing is we're making school like seem almost like irrelevant for the, for for students in terms of like engagement and the like i don't know if some of you guys feel the same way absolutely i just uh, i just am actually in the middle of drafting a blog post about the the image of thinking about one of the main things that I feel like I've been doing for many years um, is looking for the cracks in the system and then trying to figure out what's the exactly right shape and size of wedge that can be inserted <laughs> into each different crack and it takes a, a different, you know, though the design principles of the wedge vary depending on the nature of the crack and its location. But after school is one of the biggest of those of those cracks that you can often wedge real learning into. Uh, that's why I mentioned constructivism at the very beginning because I think that that the the whole um, test result driven. Uh, Full reform that that has taken hold of this country is really militantly anti-constructivist. It's it's based firmly in the model of the student as vessel who has to be filled up with this stuff they regurgitate, and this constructivist approach is is diametrically opposed to that. But it's it's interesting that you bring up that wedge because uh, with our with our puppet project we started out. Uh, we started out doing it at at, at, a, at our Saturday program, uh -huh. and um, as we had a Saturday program, Saturday academic and art enrichment program, and then we had to, uh, th then we were having some issues because it wasn't like the same ki kids coming, so we we're like we weren't having consistency with the with the kids that were coming through, mm -hmm. so we eventually migrated it back to the school space. But again, that crack from the Saturday program allowed us to maybe easier move it into the school space right. because right. it was once uh you know people start the kids were like into it and you you saw like something was was happening students they were starting to create and like feel uh connection with this we we're able to get it done and then once we did get it done at once once we did find the school space to do it which um again we had to we had to find the cracks even in within the school space so you know you can't touch reading you can't touch math right and so you got to find some other areas. But when we found it and we were with like the consistent, the consistent same kids, uh, we really exp exponentially like took off with uh, doing the project and bringing it all to fruition. So I, I like, I like, the, I like your metaphor of the cracks, Fred. It's, it's pretty right on point. Uh, can I ask a question, Sam, about your um, project? Did you use when the kids were making their puppets? Did they do some writing to um, help them to flesh out 
what they wanted the puppets to look like or what characters they were trying to create? Did they use writing to help them yeah, make better uh -huh. puppets? Yeah, so uh, like Spyro Q, they have like a process uh, first because uh, we have to come up with like what's the purpose of the pup? What are the pur purposes of the puppets and what are you concerned about? What are issues? And so, I mean, we had uh, they had debates and they they had they did journaling and so then they the, the theme of um abuse came was like the one that resonated the most so, okay so like all right we're going to create uh these representation puppets that are like representing these issues of violence um or of abuse so how do we create these puppets and so uh and so then they learned about the basic form of doing the puppets which really the basic form was the puppets could be any character but then we learned the ways to like give those uh puppets uh representations through um like design aspects through costuming and through other like other other forms um and so uh they ended up like representing this this theme of and and then we had like real creative puppets so because we, we ended up like creating like dogs uh, we right. created cats. We created. It was one. Um, it was one puppet. Was like a Smurf. It was a Smurf girl, Muslim puppet. She was really interesting. Um, <laughs> Sounds like it. Yeah. So. So. Um, yeah. They spent time thinking about it, writing about it, journaling, and then doing, and then documenting like what they were doing. We even. I uh, mean, we had the flip cam, so they would like talk about uh, how did they come up with their ideas and. Uh, what are what were they learning? What were they getting out of it? And um, so it, it was it was I can say it was a pretty generative project. Okay, uh, Mike. The reason I asked is um, I'm really interested in the concept of transmediation. Uh, I, I had mentioned that in an email to Christina last week um, of the notion of using art to inform your writing and vice versa. And um, uh, we run a course at. Um, actually several museums in our service area um, that links writing and art together um, mm -hmm. and okay. the participants um, bring in an object that's tr cherished by them and do some uh, preliminary artwork with it and figure tease out a theme and then they write poetry and essays and stories all week around that theme and develop um, a sketch a block print a uh, some watercolor and a found uh, found object sculpture around that, and each um, they alternate between the writing and the the visual, and find that the combination of creating both in text and in visual form really um, deepens their understanding of what that theme is. So I was wondering if that also applied to things like creating um, puppets or even something as simplistic as an origami. Yoda, you know, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so I wondered mm -hmm. if, if that was true in the other projects work with Make So Far. Well, I love the transmedia term. Uh, it's uh, the, you know, one of the things that I've confronted um, for years is people saying that digital storytelling just sounds like too much fun. Um, mm -hmm. And so multimodal writing is sort of the jargon buzzword alternative, but it's really not a uh, euphonic term yes. to me. Transmedia, <laughs> Transmedia has a much is a better Janet sound. Olson term. It's, it's a, from envisioning writing. Uh huh. Uh huh. We did a uh, uh, we did a project um, several years ago with the Steinbeck Museum in Salinas, where there was an exhibit within the museum of uh, an artist Eduardo Carrillo's work and so as a this was a summer um, uh, writing writers camp for middle school kids and they went to see the exhibit then uh, painted their own self portraits because many much of his work involves uh, portraiture mm -hmm. so they painted their own self portraits we then scanned those and they wrote digital stories around that experience and uh, whatever else they they wanted to write about and the, the self-portrait could then just become the author's uh, the author's photo at the back of the of the story oh nice 
The other thing that, that what, do you have that online somewhere, Fred? Uh, yes, I'll I'll look for the link and and okay. send you some of that work. Um, the the uh, the other thing that that I can't. Oh, I, I guess uh, no. I guess it was um, what you were just mentioning, Judy, about working with a museum. I I've been following museum. Uh, discussion uh, discussion groups lately um, and there's some really interesting things happening I just read about a project where a museum got a grant to bring I believe it was middle school kids um, into the museum to research about the history of objects in the museum and then write Wikipedia articles about those objects oh, interesting. so um, that involved getting the students trained in using Wikipedia, which is not simple. You know, I'm a Wikipedia editor myself, and it is, it, it is not a simple system to use at all. And, and that was one of the things that the kids pointed to as being one of the most exciting things about this project was that this was real. This was, you know, Wikipedia is, is out there, and everybody around the world is looking at it. Um, I gotta Can just I, a sidebar. Um, jump in, Fred. Paul, go, ahead. go ahead. I just, Fred. Please go ahead. So, what's your three favorite articles that you've worked on on Wikipedia? Oh, I I uh, <laughs> consistently am editing the digital storytelling entry. There's okay. lots of of uh, politics and and uh, uh, undercurrents and overtones to. <laughs> the oh. how phrases get turned there and and uh -huh. uh, you know it's it editing wikipedia is, is seems like in large part sort of massaging out marketing speak mm -hmm. that people are always trying to insert into it mm -hmm. okay that's a cool example yeah thanks yeah. christina you were gonna say well um i was just looking at the time and yeah. I was just thinking that um, I was sort of thinking back to your question, Paul, like what's the center? <laughs> because <laughs> this work, this work definitely grows and expands. And what's exciting is that all the sites involved have been making different partnerships and thinking about different ways to cre create opportunities for students to make um, stuff, you know, mm -hmm. or things or ideas or play with um materials in new ways. So it's an emerging project. I just wanted to say it's a pilot project. Um, and we're all sort of figuring that out together. So Judy is new, but in many ways, we're all kind of new, you know, okay. like the, the Pennsylvania Writing Literature Project is just starting. But um, in many ways, all the sites are still sort of figuring this out. Right. And, and, um, and that work that she's been doing I in think the museum that, is not so new. So yeah. Right, right. They have a history yeah. at their site right. of this kind of work. So, right. um, but one of the things that my questions would be to all of you guys is, um, you know, we wanted to create um, our intention um, nationally, and we're still working on it, is to create a website that might support more of the how-to kind of writing in a sort of more structured way, kind of like the, the Make Projects how-to site that I posted. Um, but if there is this opportunity of youth voices um, to share, for students to share some of what they're doing, I'm just curious if there seems like something you think everybody, that would be of interest um, to share. Um, and I don't know, Paul, if that was your question too. Yeah. Like where would be kind of the well, common I, thread between all of it? I think so. One of the things, one of the ways I was thinking to rephrase this is that if I'm mm -hmm. in the middle of a puppet project, um, I read the stuff that Sam's students post about making their puppet their puppets differently than if I'm just interested in it in some way. Right. So if people are working on similar projects, they give each other feedback in different kinds of ways. I think more meaningful mm -hmm. ways in some way. I think. Yeah. Um, so I'm just wondering if there's some advantage to, I don't know, 
Um, well, first of all, I think it's about getting getting some instructions for if you want to do this project too, this is how you could do it, and then letting each other know you're working on the same projects over time. I don't know. I don't. I'm not sure. <laughs> are, are you, this is like standards for projects. <laughs> are you thinking about yeah. like, more stories? What would if, more, more. Yeah. Go ahead. Well, what would what would a maker typically if we think about what would an adult want? And then how can we make that work for kids? My husband um, builds furniture for fun. Um, it's a little bit crazy, but okay. Um, and so when he wants to know how to do something, he you know, is coming across some stumbling block with putting a drawer in something. He goes to woodworking websites and reads articles and so forth. And there must be bulletin boards or something on there where they can post questions for each other, that kind of thing. So um, I would imagine that kids who are involved in our make projects would want a place where they could go and there might be as Paul said some here's some already created articles for all right if you're a novice and you want to try something here's something you could try um, and or a place also for them to post questions to find you know, ask an expert um, another an expert kid who knows more about whether it's woodworking or ceramics or whatever they're attempting that they could get some feedback if there are no kids at their school who are uh, working on something similar. Does that sound like a feasible thing to do? Yeah, I think you've advanced the thinking quite a bit there. Uh, Sam, when your kids were making the puppets, if they would have gone online to find other kids who are making puppets, would that have helped them? Would that, you know, can you imagine that sharing being useful in some way? Uh, yeah, I, I would have I would have imagined it being useful. In fact, um, for we 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 went online for because before we started making puppets, we we made little um, pocket uh, books, little pocket uh, journals, hand, right? Yeah, little pocket uh, books, and we went online and we 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 went online and found found other kids how other kids were making. Like or kind of like origamis and things like like that, and kids are like really in, into the origamis, and I mean like and some of these things they end up like doing on their own. They're not even like they do them. In fact, instead of doing like they work in classrooms, especially if it gets like, you know, if they get juiced and excited about stuff. So yeah, they definitely go out and uh, seek out um, either other kids in school that know how, like with the origamis, for example. And one, I remember, uh, again, this wasn't part of our make project, but I saw a, a young man, he like checked out a couple of origami books because uh, he saw some other kids playing with origamis and and he he wasn't hiding like that he had the origami books, but he kind of had to, you know, he had to have his pose like, oh yeah, I, um, I got, you know, he had to like save his, I got this book, but uh, oh, I'm, I'm just going to check out, you know, I'm just going to check it out. I'm, you know, like I'm into origamis, but I'm not into it that much. You know that kind of thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Interesting. So I can see them going online, and uh, with, with them going online, is it is a difference of going online to find out information that, as opposed to like carrying a book around that you're learning about a thing? Is it's a different mm -hmm. kind of um. It's a different kind of like interaction. I, well, I, I, as like Susan's if somebody in, in the somebody chat here. You can share video. You can share, you know, it's not just how to steps. It's also go look at this video and see how it works, too. But mm. Christina, you were going to say. Right. I mean, well, I was just saying that um, we don't have a formal how-to site for people to, sh for youth to share that's safe and set up and everything. So mm. I do wonder if there's something else that's part of the process that if everybody wanted to share it so for instance like a video i did see susan's um susan's thing and what if people kids showed shared videos about what they made and why it was important to them or what they thought was interesting about it and sort of some of how they made them you know could you start to experiment with some of that stuff um yeah no and... i was go ahead no, I played around with that, trying to do that with with our puppets. And I mean, we ran out of time. That's, mm -hmm. that's always an enemy as well. But um, yeah, that's that's definitely something that I wanted to do. That's where the kids were using the foot cams to kind of do that, and we just ran we ran out of time. Uh, 
Fred and I saw some folks at ISCME doing this. Fred, do you remember um, when the kids kind of, they had a design process set up and the kids, you know, drafted and then prototyped and then built something? And oh, I'm sorry, Chrissy, can you explain what that acronym is? What's ISCME? Oh, I'm sorry. It's a, um, it's a research group out in California that stands for the Institute for Science and Knowledge in education, I think. Okay. But um, they have a, a design process for making um, that they support students and teachers in thinking about. And um, at the end, they um, interview the kids about what they did, why they did it, what they learned, you know. So I'm just thinking the opportunity of Youth Voices is, well, Paul, I'm not exactly sure. Um, what the opportunity is or what the parameters of the opportunity would be, but it could be an opportunity to share some work like that that's emerging from the project so that kids can see other kids making things. Um, yeah, I think that sounds, uh, yeah, that, uh, that's a good thing. Um, even before that, and what I, what I would love for everyone to spend some time doing, um, in the next three days, is um, there's a whole section on Youth Voices called Missions, and it would be really interesting if people could put up some, or put up their favorite um, make project there so that other mm -hmm. people could try it too. So there's that would be another way to kind of, for teachers to begin sharing different ideas with each other. Um, one of, that was one of my questions actually about Youth Voices is um, to, to I, I not really knowing the site really well and not having participated much or, or interacted much, I wasn't quite sure what the protocols were in terms of how much you enter in as a teacher and, and how much it is a student space and, and respecting it as a student space. You know what? There are so many students using it that uh, we're not so worried about if you want to post something. You know, we can. Uh -huh. That's cool. Uh -huh. um, so that's one answer. Right. The other answer is, yeah, it's mainly a student space. Mainly, stu we want students interacting with each other there. But the missions is the place where we can start to begin to. Sh and maybe there's a better name for missions. Maybe it's challenges. I don't know what it is, but. Um, so if we can begin to share ideas there. Then what, mm -hmm. what's nice is that it's really easy to attach examples um, of of people doing that. Mm -hmm. So Sam, I want to I want to put you in the spotlight for uh, again for a second, and just imagine: is there a a short? Oh, I don't know. You can do this in th three days. Puppet project that you could put up. Um, on Youth Voices as a mission that other people might be able to do. Do they see Does you? that make sense? Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, I'm <laughs> sorry. sorry. I got uh, you in the middle of adjustments. Um, the the, the <laughs> answer is kind of complicated. Like our goal was to do like, uh, our goal was to do this, these big performance puppets, which isn't like a three day process. I know. Yeah, yeah. And our secondary goal was to do the mini, pu mini puppets, which were going to be the students individual puppets. But again, because, because of, Starting because we had to find those cracks, right. and then we had to move the cracks. We ended up just not having enough time. So, right. um, and yeah. and and going back to it, that that may be the goal to do it in in a uh, like where we would do mini puppets and not these big big performance pieces. And in that way, we I could see there uh, it being in a three maybe in a three day type of. Uh, you know, I made short, up three days. Space. It doesn't have to be three days. Um, you know, yeah. you guys are using the word cracks, and some other projects are using the words hacks, right? So, but I think we're kind of getting at the same thing. Th these need to be doable quick, and then if you want to go and do the big performance piece, you you kind of contact Sam and find out how you did it, and you know what kind of support you needed. But but the missions could be. I think need to be quick, doable, you know, examples of the work. 
So well, yeah. I think it's a good idea for us to in, to figure out well what what will it's a it's a it's a draft so to speak of what we want youth voices to look like for this for this particular purpose. If we put something out there and say, oh, well, that's good, but we also need to do this. So before we have kids using it, try and fool around with it ourselves a little bit. Mm -hmm. That's what you're getting at, Paul? Mm -hmm. I think so, yeah. I mean, I'll, I said this, I think, even last week, but I'll g give it as an example again. You know, one of the missions I put up there and really like, but I'm not even sure if I've been clear so other people can do it yet. But, I, you know, in, in our garden, I had students take pictures of different flowers and vegetables and plants that they were interested in that they wanted to do an inquiry about. They then put those images up and wrote poems about them. They didn't do the research themselves. Other students found their poems, did the research about the plant, and, and then gave a more scientific definition and how the plant is used and, and did some research and had the quote from that research and then write another poem at the end. I, I kind of, I think it's a, a mission that's kind of doable. Um, it, other people could try it too, kind of thing. Um, so it's that, so that's one example of, but then, right, so when your students are doing that, they would recognize that, you know, this is what's being done kind of thing. Down the line then, and, and uh, Chris Sloan, students have done and Susan's students have done a little bit of work on this I think we can think about publications out of that so that we could publish you know here's a publication of garden poems that were written around this mission idea so that's some of the thinking that we're trying to do in order to address I mean, we have the same problem in order to address like there's all this stuff going on how can people talk to each other um, and we have this same problem on Youth Voices, I think. Go ahead, Christina, you were going to ask. I was just going to ask, how many missions do you imagine there being? Because, you know, what I want to free this group in, from thinking about is I don't want this group uh -huh. to feel like you all have to be responsible for figuring out a space that works for everybody in the MAKE project, you know? Like, yeah. I want you guys to figure out, you know, is there a way that some of your students could share some of their work they're doing in this project? You know, that's, that would be, you know, great. And it would be great to see some of the work and hear some of the writing that the students are doing in a space that's created to support students in doing that. So if, so Paul, if there, so if there's, you know, three folks here with classes mm -hmm. who probably have a couple, you know, several projects happening or sort of that are being thought about. So that could be potentially like, you know, five, six, seven, eight missions. I mean, is that the kind of thing? Like, do missions get added like that? Uh, um, yeah, and then or we have is to it... think about organizing, right? <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. But if there's a project you think others might be interested in, and your students are publishing it, then some other students might come and respond or join in. Is that what you're imagining? I think so. Yeah. And it also, oftentimes when kids publish work, people want to know where did this come from? And so attaching the work to some context in some way is, is useful, I think, too. And, and so that you can say, you know, this came out of this mission kind of thing. I think that's the thinking. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I mean, Sus um, Sus <laughs> Christina, I, I'm not sure what the problem is you're worried about there. We're, we're we're not getting enough of these up yet. <laughs> so uh, I was just, just wondering if you're imagining like project by project that there might be a bunch of them. I don't know. Um, I don't think everything okay, I you want to share necessarily. It's okay. I, yeah. I don't know. Well, I haven't thought about it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what was that? Go ahead. Anybody have any other thoughts? Jump in on. Well, I, I always, ahead, I always, whenever ma Maker comes up, I always want to mention string games and string figures because it, it's such a universal, uh, little, quick, easy thing for kids to learn to do that is, gives them a real sense of accomplishment that has all sorts of 
curricular ramifications from e e teaching the dexterity to do keyboarding for early elementary kids through mm -hmm. improving your keyboarding as you get older through um, putting uh, things in a cultural context and I've, I've done several projects with that as a as a uh, as a springboard but and it's also an, a great example of one of those ones that you can sort of wiggle through the crack and then you'll often get shut down for because teachers don't want to deal with kids being distracted by pulling out a string and starting to play games when they're not supposed to. <laughs> but as I'm listening to you, I've never done that. So I would need more of a guide for how to go ahead. And right, exactly. Yeah. But I, I like your idea that it's a project that's more universal in some way that you can use in different contexts. So that, that maybe that's a good idea for talking about what a mission is. Or and origami a, or paper folding might be yeah, another broad right. subject. Mm -hmm. right. Right. Yeah. What was it? There was something that. Oh, it doesn't, it's okay. <laughs> the photography, things of that sort. Yeah, like photography oh, books. Um, many of us do that. So, so it might be a matter of capturing what many of us already do, um, and and getting that together in some way. Right. I had a question for Judy. Yes. Judy, what, what, which, um, which museums are you working with? Uh, we have worked with uh, the Mitchell Museum in Doylestown. And uh, actually, uh, they approached us oh, 15 years ago about doing some work. And uh, because we had just come from an NWP meeting where some other sites were talking about doing museum partnerships around this kind of work, we were able to develop this course. Um, and then um, we also work with the Brandywine Review Museum, um, and uh, we also have um, run it in, uh, sorry, my neighbors are outside now, um, run it in Reading at the Goggle Works. Um, so um, we've, we've been really successful, and just also so you know, since you're in the area, um, um, Comcast offers grants for kids who are in underserved populations to have access to um, arts programs. So for the past couple of years, we've been bringing um, about 50 students to the Brandywine and River Museum and doing some work there where they do some, they read a book and then um, they do some writing. For example, um, there's a book called Pieces of Georgia that mm -hmm. uh, Jen Bryant, who's a local author, wrote, and it features artwork of the Wyeth family. And so our kids read the book, um, mm -hmm. and then they went to the museum, and they did some sketches, and then they came back, and they decided to more fully render one of the pieces of art, and they did some writing to go along with that, and then we hosted a, 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 a show right around parent conference time. So, yeah. um, so yeah, the, we... the cost of the the museum um, and the bus was covered by Comcast. So that might be something to look into for. Yeah, no, we had a um, per partnership with the Moore College of Arts. Okay. And we did a, 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 a art a photography and a literacy project. It was really great. And we did it with some other um, community art center as well. But uh, um, so uh, I was just curious which, which art partners you were working with. Yeah. Um, so as you guys get more specific and, and local there, I'm, I'm realizing one of the things I couldn't remember earlier to say is that when these missions get written, what's tricky is you want to write it for your students and, and the museum you're working with in this example, but then you need to pose it in such a way that, you know, my students and I can think about museums here in New York that we could work with as well. Right. So that universalizing the the project is a little tricky, but I think useful too in in, in sharing mm -hmm. in some way. Um, we're we're close on time. I, I I'm gonna kind of wrap up by mentioning that I'm moving to a new school. Back, I'm moving back to the Bronx, um, and I mention it to say that right across the Bronx River um, from my school is a. Uh, a group called Rocking the Boat. And what they do is they build boats with kids, these wonderful yeah. boats. 
So I, I met with my principal for the first time yesterday and then walked around and, and met these guys building these boats. So I'm, I'm going to look into that. <laughs> so that's Ooh. part of what I'm that messing really with. <laughs> anyway. um, why don't we start with Sam and say, Sam, what are you excited about this semester as you get started? I'm, 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 I'm excited about, like you say, uh, sparking some kind of creativity and um, like, yeah, I'm just excited about creativity, and I'm also excited about, like you say, finding. The, I'm, I'm going back to those cracks, but I'm, I'm excited about finding, find those cracks. Because if we don't find the cracks, nothing will happen. Cool, Judy. <laughs> um, I actually was just uh, chatting with my um, art teacher partner for this year's project with the art museum, and we're going to be doing some um, nature studies. There's a, a Wyeth show that's up right now. Um, uh, Jamie Wyeth still lives in our area and has a farm with many animals that he um, paints. So looking at how we can develop that work with our students and um, trying to figure out the writing we can do around animals. So that's my new challenge. Yeah, cool. Fred. Well, I, I um, am uh, really uh, want to just pursue a couple of particular examples about the the metaphor of the cracks. Um, the the other example that I, I think is a crucial one for us here in California, and I think applies and would be helpful for um, people all over the country, is English learner uh, programs and services for English learners are often among the few remaining areas where some uh, authentic learning can be injected into regular school. Um, so that's one of the things I wanted to just throw out there as another place I look for cracks. And then collaboration, just really uh, searching out and networking. I just uh, spoke to some people from our teachers union about trying to get them involved with uh, some of our projects. We have already worked with libraries um, and with museums and so just you know, continuing to network and try to make connections to bring authentic learning back into public school. And Fred, I, I you think did... your point about uh, the underserved populations are really uh, strong, Fred, because when you look at our three sites, it looks like um, we've got a, a good number of kids who would really profit from thinking in a different way. Um, my my school district has is 40% Latino, and um, mm -hmm. this gives kids another way to be uh, really successful and enter into learning in a different way. So it's something else we should keep an eye out for. I wanted to get real practical for a minute with Fred and say you once you have a class list and you're ready to get kids onto Youth Voices, please email me right. and I'll make that easier. It's getting easier, but I, I'll. I have a couple Great. tricks I can tell you. <laughs> I just need Good. email addresses Thanks. and names. <laughs> okay. Good. Christina, you get last word tonight. <laughs> oh, okay, great. Well, thank you, Paul, for um, creating this opportunity and the opportunity of Youth Voices, too, for there to be a space to share some of this work. Um, one of the things I'm excited about is just being able to um, share some of the facilitate the sharing of some of the great work that is happening in classrooms and how, um, you know, you can really see how creative um, everyone is in these opportunities to really make and build and share and document the work. So um, the more we can find places to share that work, um, that we create spaces that work for all of us um, to share and um, show what's happening and document some of it. Um, that would be great. So thanks for the opportunity to just kind of brainstorm that a little bit. And can we get together eventually and have chariot races too? So, like to <laughs> are we going to build the chariots? <laughs> yeah, I think we should. Come on. So, right. solar chariots. There you go. <laughs> Maker Fair in New York's coming up, right? So yeah, yeah. they had chariots at the last one. Yep. Um, what? I do want. I, Did I do that throw think you that, off? <laughs> you know, if, yeah. I guess I I want to say that I do think 
work. It'll help, help cracks, I think, um, or help us to, you know, see how we can connect to some of, um, uh, create more opportunities. That's what I'm hoping will grow out of it. So if we can think about ways to do that together, that'd be great. And you know everybody's doing great work, so thank you all. And thank you. Um, I want to say that uh, we uh, do this live every Wednesday evening, um, 9 p.m. on the East Coast and 6 p.m. on the West Coast and elsewhere. Um, uh, over the World Bridges uh, Network um, at edtechtalk.com, I want to thank Dave Cormier and Jeff Lebo for all of that and thank the National Writing Project here tonight as well. Um, so we'll see you again. Thank you everybody for a great conversation. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks everybody. Thanks Good night, for everybody. the opportunity. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.